The covering material of a hockey glove is called the outer shell. It can be made of genuine leather or synthetic leather. There's even a new synthetic material called carbon that's tear-proof, even if a sharp skate blade slashes it. What it's made of is a closely guarded trade secret. One hockey glove is made up of about 30 different parts depending on the model. Workers lay a die in the shape of each part on the outer shell material. A hydraulic press forces it down like a cookie cutter. Workers then cut foam pieces to line the glove. This low density foam is stiff enough to provide protection, but flexible enough to enable the player to grip the stick properly. A seamstress now lock stitches the outer shell and foam lining parts together, assembling each section of the glove separately. After finishing the back of the hand, called the back roll, she pieces together the sum. She sews three sides closed. One end stays open, so they'll be able to insert more protective foam afterward. These are the finger pieces. The seamstress uses a tacking machine to sew up the sides and tack the corners for added strength. Again, leaving one end, the top, open. Now they assemble the fingers to the base of the glove. They use what's called a cylinder arm machine. It has a narrow sewing surface that protrudes, making it easy to access the fingertips. Next come the parts that make up the palm and the gusset, the piece that goes between the fingers and the palm. Like before, workers cut the parts using a die. The palm and gusset can be made of high-end synthetic suede or leather, or even genuine leather. The advantage of real leather is that it can be treated with an antibacterial product that combats odor caused by the hand sweating inside the glove. Again, the seamstress uses the cylinder arm machine to sew the palm to the glove base, which already has the fingers attached. Next, the glove goes onto a machine that's custom made for the hockey glove industry. Using air pressure to power a piston, it injects pieces of high density foam padding into the open end of the fingers. High density foam is rock hard, so it provides maximum protection. But high density foam is too stiff to go into the thumb, which needs some flexibility. So instead, they make what's called an armored thumb plate, which is essentially a plastic thumb shield. A hot forge presses a flat sheet of hard plastic onto an aluminum mold in the shape of the plate. Then they wrap the plate in low-density foam and with another machine custom made for this purpose, inject it into the glove thumb. The lower part of the glove is now complete. A seamstress finishes off the edge with cotton tape. All that's left to do is assemble and attach the cuff. The standard cuff is about six centimeters wide. You can buy the gloves this company produces for retail stores or order customized gloves with your name embroidered on the cuffs. Professional hockey players have the factory build gloves to their own specifications with extra protection in key areas or certain adjustments that they feel give them an advantage on the ice. The most important part of the glove is the palm. That's the area that endures the most wear and tear. The sturdier the palm material, the longer the glove will last. But at the same time, the palm padding can't be too thick. That would make the glove uncomfortable to wear and take away the player's feel for the hockey stick.